prayer for listening hearts and minds. Great love which dwells among us, hold us and guide us now. As we listen for your wisdom in scripture, may all you offer nurture us in love and empower us to share that love freely with all. Amen. Our scripture reading today is Hebrews 11, verses 12, 1. Let us listen carefully, <clears throat> excuse me, for God's wisdom and leading. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain's. By faith, Enoch was taken so that he did not experience death. By faith, Noah, warned by God about events as yet unseen, respected the warning and built an ark to save his household. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions about his burial. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth, because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land, but when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. And so, friends, as we turn to reflect on this word, please pause for prayer with me. Holy One, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, it's been a reflective week at my house. Since Maggie outed not only Jody this week, but me last week, you know it was uh, a birthday last week, and in my case, birthdays which edge toward decade milestones tend to make people reflective by themselves. But it's more than that. While my children may not have admitted that they were happy about the bucket of candy they got on Monday, they were. They delighted in that bucket of candy from Monday night, but I have cherished more fully the days that follow. All Saints Day, which the church has celebrated on November 1st since the year 835, always puts me in a particularly reflective mood. And that has been heightened in recent years with a Spanish language teacher in the household who strives at this time of year to educate his students 
on the traditional observance of Dia de los Muertos in Mexico and elsewhere. So fueled by leftover birthday treats, no candy, there wasn't a lot of sharing in our house, but leftover birthday treats and the delicious traditional sweet bread, pan de muerto, this week, I've given much thought to all the saints who have gone before us, or as the author of the letter to the Hebrews calls them, the great cloud of witnesses. Well, some Christian traditions reserve the title of saint for those who have been martyred for their faith or otherwise are known to have been exemplars of Christian faith. Our branch of the Christian family tree, the Reformed tradition, lifts up a different understanding of saints. On All Saints Day and always, while giving thanks for the lives of particularly faithful people of the past is well and good and right, we also intentionally emphasize that we are all saints and part of the one continuing living communion of saints. Rather than putting saints on a pedestal as holy people set apart in glory, we give glory to God for the ordinary holy lives of the believers of this and every age. As I reflect on all the saints that I've known over the course of my life, they include the folks in my home church who annually provided pizza and pop for the end of year children's choir parties. The men who climbed up into the rafters somehow before the first Sunday of Advent to hang the gigantic wreath in front of the organ pipes, which was a focal point of the seasonal decorations. I still don't understand how they pulled it off. Includes the senior citizen, the 80 plus years young woman who greeted me and all of my hungry high school classmates with a smile each Tuesday as we rushed into the building for a homemade lunch. In subsequent congregations, I've met saints who arrive early and stay late to ensure communion elements, plates, and cups are all in order. Saints who give rides to medical appointments at the drop of a hat. Saints who bake and clean and trim bushes and mow lawns and move benches all without a moment's hesitation. Saints who keep minutes of meetings, and saints who speak hard truths with deepest love, both in and out of meetings. I've met saints who spend hours sharing the gift of music. Saints who spend hours visiting the sick and others who cannot travel far from home. And I've met saints who spend hours counting contributions, signing expense reports, and poring over financial statements to ensure God's love flows through church finances rather than in spite of them. I remember lots of saints who understand that giving is better than getting. I also remember saints particularly near and dear to my heart, family members, given and chosen, friends, colleagues, congregants, and mentors who have nurtured me in faith, life, and leadership, accompanied me in joy and in deepest sorrow, and shown me what God's love looks like in flesh here and now. It is no exaggeration to say there are too many to name by name. I remember them today with love and gratitude, and I pray, I fervently pray and trust that you too have dear to you saints to remember today. Remembering together is sacred. So let's take a breath together and call those dear to you saints to mind. Take this moment to pull their names up into the forefront of your heart, to remember their faces, 
their voices, their lives, and their love. May remembering give you hope and deepest encouragement. Because friends, as I wrote in a recent column for the local paper, remembering all the saints, all the ordinary people doing their best to serve and love God and one another reminds us that we are not alone and we don't have to do everything on our own. We don't even have to do everything. Rather, as best we can in the time we have, we are called to carry forward the work of nurturing God's dreams of justice, love, peace, and wholeness for all. The work began long before us and will continue long after we have died. As I shared in the paper and have shared here before, it makes me think of the now famous words that the father Ken Untner wrote in preparing a homily for Cardinal Dearden in 1979. He wrote, it helps now and then to step back and take a long view. We accomplish in our lifetime only a tiny fraction of the magnificent enterprise that is God's work. We are prophets of a future, not our own. Some may find that disheartening, but I find it to be exactly the opposite. For me, there is great comfort in knowing that we are part of something far bigger than we can see or even imagine. And there is even greater comfort in knowing that that far bigger thing, that communion of saints, that cloud of witnesses guided by God is full of people just like me. People trying to be faithful, but prone to faults. And all that comfort is multiplied knowing that all those saints that have gone before us surround us still as that great cloud of witnesses. Remembering the saints, their faithfulness and their faults reminds us that we too can do our part, come what may. So come what may, in the week ahead, in the year ahead, and all that lies ahead, let us remember the saints. And as the Reverend Greg Bruce, the Reverend Bruce Reyes Chow prayerfully invites us, let us remember them, not romanticizing the struggles they endured, but letting their perseverance fuel our quests for justice. Let us remember them, not repeating the persecutions they bore, but remembering them as an invitation to let us extend welcome to all who seek liberation. Let us not forget the communities who shaped us, and let us remember that we too shape others. For all the saints, all the ancestors, all the generations past and present, let us give thanks. And let us remember too, beloved people of God, now is our time to do our part, to keep God's love flowing onward in the one continuing living communion of saints. Amen and amen.